on a bit more serious note now, yeah. what do you think the sport could do differently to mm -hmm. push themselves? And what do you think that the IAAF does well mm -hmm. for the sport? Because that's yeah. basically the be all and end all of yeah. athletics. That's the well, main thing. For me, I think I would say like, the best way to say it is if I talk about other sports as well, mm -hmm. because I don't want to bash athletics and say, we don't do anything because you know, there are good points to it and this is what I love. Look at basketball, look at um, American football, look at tennis, look at boxing, look at UFC, this goes on. Look at how those sports are marketed mm -hmm. and ask yourself what athletics um, doesn't have that those sports have. We've got different events, we've got different personalities, different body shapes, different ethnicities, so many things that you could delve into yeah. to push and promote an event to draw public attention. Mm -hmm. In boxing, you've only got two people fighting. In the grand scheme of things, how entertaining is that as opposed to like free out, a three hour event of so much going on, yeah. intense competition, blah, blah, blah. But that gets pushed well because of how, how they market it. Yeah. And, and I think the thing is, it's like, I know people talk about, oh, but because I talked to, to so many people about this. I talked to people within the BBC, within different um, outlets with influence and power. And it's all, and the things I hear back is, oh, it's the budget and, you know, but people don't have the money for this and blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't have to be about money. Mm. Because look at the Bleacher Report. Like, okay, yeah, they might be sponsored now, but I'm sure they had to start from somewhere. And that, and that, that outlet sheds light in the best way on the NBA, on boxing, all sports, on everything, yeah? Sick. Yeah. Um, Flow track are, are, are doing a decent job in athletics, but I feel like because it's something that's kind of predominantly American, it mm -hmm. can only really benefit that side yeah. of the world yeah. in a way. But like, we need to use our outlets and make it more fun, make it tasteful. Mm -hmm. I know the people that come out to um, our events are usually middle-aged people, but what happens when those middle-aged people become elderly people? Yeah. Like, wh where's gonna where's the point gonna come where we shift um, the focus on who we're trying to attract? Mm -hmm. Young people. And I feel like if we're attracting things in a cool way, the engagement in sport is gonna go up crazily. It has to. Because I know when I watch some of these things on Instagram and see it on TV, sometimes I'm thinking, you know what? I wanna try a thing in the UFC. I know I'm gonna get my head knocked off. <laughs> but I'm thinking I wanna try it because this yeah. looks fun. Look at how they promoted it. Look at the trash talk. Like. When we have press conferences, it's the press conferences with the same athletes all the time. And I'm not gonna say they don't deserve it. Of course they deserve it because they're sick. And I know yeah. if I'm in that position, well, I wanna have the press conference, but spice it up a bit. Um, have a press conference. Okay, if you're gonna have the women's 10K, mm. which I don't know if anyone watches, like people watch it, but like yeah. sometimes it's people's toilet breaks as well. Let's be real, yeah? I mean, I only watch it depending on who's running. Or you might watch it if like, Mo was in it or if someone yeah, wanted to see was in it. Yeah, last two laps. Yeah, oh, yeah. Last oh, last laps. Go, 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 yeah. Go. yeah. Oh, last, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you're not gonna watch it. A lot, a lot of people are gonna watch it from start to finish. It's like half yeah. an hour or something like yeah. that, yeah? Yeah. yeah? All right, cool. Now imagine if in a press conference before you had the world number one or the top two people come into the event you had a press conference with them both there at the same time mm -hmm. and asking questions that were like, that would provoke an interesting response. And I, and I spoke to some of the guys at British Athletics like a, a couple of times about this as well. If we've got trials coming up, if everyone's, if everyone's okay with it, mm. bring everyone to have a press conference and ask them questions that I guess would force the other man to say something that would now say, oh, I can't wait to see this race. That would be amazing because- We don't do that. For one, if you're if you've got everyone around the table and then you turn and say all right who's so, the best here so who's the best here or <sighs> well your head to head with this person stands yeah. at five to one exactly like but that's what we need we need that to make it more exciting for the public and nine times out of ten we don't even actually get to see you don't get to see the, all the, the, uh, the um post-race stuff. We don't get to see none of that. Unless the person won. You don't get to hear from the other seven who might have something interesting yeah. to say. Nice. Oh, you, you didn't quite make it. Move to the it, side. And all we get, and this is the thing I always say all the time, all we get is a, is a, is a compilation of maybe like 30 seconds of your face being on the TV screen. Yeah. In that 30 seconds, you're now trying to work on your outreach to your fans, mm -hmm. get new engagement, all these other things, build your social media platform, build your brand, with 30 seconds on a screen. And in, in that 30 seconds, you're not the main shot. Your yeah. head is there or your <laughs> ear or your elbow. How's a man gonna see that and then say, yeah, I'm a fan of this guy's elbow. 
<laughs> not gonna work like that. So we need to have, and, and this is the thing I say with um, the Bleacher Report and the other, there's another account that I've seen, or, or the football accounts of 433 or whatever, all yeah. the other accounts, yeah? yeah. yeah. Like, they cover people before they blow as well. Like yeah. they will cover the upcoming 14, 15, 16 year old, 17 yeah. year old. So when they make it to the NBA and they're like the high school. But that's what we know about everyone. Nice. We know about yeah. everyone yeah. because you've surprise. seen them when they, when they were 17, you've seen their um, highlight rows. And that's what I was saying before. Like I'm such a big fan of the Aflex productions because mm. they will cover the montages on people. So it's documented. If someone wants to do their research on you, they will see yeah. Yeah. your race and they know what you're about. And I think in athletics, we don't have that. All it is is, yeah, tickets on sale now. Yeah, or come and watch so and so run. Yeah, that's it. And it's literally. And the same we're not person. selling up. You go to trials and you look at the stadium. It's bloody empty, and you trained for forty plus weeks, working your ass off, blood, sweat, and tears. You're going to a stadium and it's not even full. And I'm not saying that doesn't. I'm sure your motivation shouldn't just be the crowd. It's not my motivation, but there's a big difference between going to a stadium and watching and seeing it be patching, even seeing people moving around, not even concentrating mm. to be in a packed stadium that you only see, I guess, at championships or at certain diamond leagues. Yeah, because nine times out of 10, when you're That's watching- That's the, the thing. We need to think about why did, why did, back in the day, Charles used to be rammed, packed out. They'd packed out Crystal Palace, Loughborough. These, yeah, Crystal these are means used to be on BBC. So where, I know the funding and the money and everything, okay, whatever. But in this day and age, you don't need to be a millionaire or have a million pound budget to create exposure on something. If that was the case, none of us would be anywhere because who has the money to push themselves if that's what it solely yeah. relied on. All it needs is a changing of the guard. And I think a... Um, a refreshment of ideas, bringing in young people and getting yeah. their opinions on things and saying, actually, let's try this push. Let's engage people through our stories or through our polls or through the interview structures we do or through, you know what I mean? Because think about when you're on Instagram. If I'm someone who is pushing something now, I'm gonna think I need to make something that 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 I wouldn't want to scroll past, mm -hmm. and essentially, because our, our attention span, when we're looking at something on Instagram or on Twitter, is so small. Yeah. If it doesn't grab you in the first three seconds, you're gonna switch You're gonna yeah. switch off. Scroll. Now imagine, when I, when I watch these things, these boxing things, you've got Dillian versus Shaw recently, all these boxing things. What they'll have, they'll have a long, boring video, mm -hmm. but in that video, someone says something spicy. Yeah. That's what they've captioned it. I'm gonna tear his head off. Or what did, what did Chisora say? I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna, make him feel like lack laxatives. Or he said something like, something stupid, he's gonna poop it himself <laughs> or something crazy, right? But that's what they stuck to. Mm. And I watched it because I wanted to realize what the hell made Derek Chisora say this? Mm. That's why I watched it. The gloves are off. We don't have an equivalent of the gloves are off. We don't have an equivalent of first take. Why? But we're meant to be an elite sport when the world stops. Every four years, the whole world stops for the 100 meters final. The world will stop again in two years time in Tokyo. It will stop. But why don't we have, why are we only waiting to that year to push track? Every four what years. happens in the years before? Imagine if you pushed it in the years before, then that year would be even bigger. Yeah. And that's where we're gonna have more sponsors, more engagement, but instead, all we wanna, all we wanna shed light on are the negative people in the sport who are doping, and then that's it. But what about all the positive things that's going on in the sport? No one wants to talk about that. And I just feel like there's doping going on in every sport. Look at John Jones. John Jones has failed more times than I've, I don't even know, like, I can't even know what it's, he's felt so many times and no one ain't really saying that much and he's still allowed to become a heavyweight champion it's and all this stuff. It's interesting that you say that because that's always a big thing with, and it's a big thing with athletics, but it's one thing with British athletics that really grinds my gears. It's like, they have to do everything in their power to make sure you know that this person has done XYZ. So crazy. <laughs> and it's and like, I'm not, and the thing is, I'm not, sitting, I'm not sitting here advocating for it at all. I'm not saying, don't shed light on it, man, it's a calm thing. No, I'm not saying that. Yeah, yeah. What I am saying is, it doesn't need to be the headlines because doping happens in every walk of life. It happens in every sport. But mm -hmm. there's a reason why Tyson Fury, for instance, is winning Sportsman of the Year, Moment of the Year, and getting all these accolades. But he's a drug cheat. No one is making no noise. And I'm not saying, we should allow drug cheats to come back and don't shed light on their, on on their, on what's happened to them. Mm. What I am saying is, don't make it the focus. Shed light, don't make it the focus. Don't make it the focus, focus on the, the positive sport. things that's happened in sport. There's so many good things that have happened in 2018. Yet, when you think about track, what you think most things you're gonna think about is Russia, doping, being banned, so and so did this, Gatlin, blah blah blah. 
why are we talking about this? I think that, that was why 2016 was so big. Yeah. Because the focus was so much on bad guy, good guy. Bad guy, good guy. And, and I get that narrative, but it's only so long you can run <laughs> with that. Yeah. That was, that was probably the only time where you've had something like boxing. That was actually 2015, yeah, I think, yeah. um, where Beijing. You, where you've had yeah, that, like, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is, this is going to be good because this is a guy who's effectively lost everything, yeah. won everything, lost everything, come back, and seems to be... <laughs> on the way to being a that, real challenge. That, that storyline was sick. I remember watching it that year and, and seeing the final and thinking, Bo, come on, <laughs> that, ah! Because that was... the storyline was litty. I, I rated that, but the 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 under the under the underlining tones behind that was doping. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? And I think we can make storylines that are positive that draw attention without it being about drugs. Do what what did Gatlin achieve since he come back? He, achieve so many different things but rather than shine light on that you're still trying to bring back all these negatives from way back in 2003 yeah. and, you, and you don't have to you don't have to forgive him you do not have to forgive him because i'm sure there's a lot of people whose opportunities he took through no doping and I'm, yeah. and I'm never ever in a million years gonna sit here and say um are oh, people dope it happens whatever no i'm not saying that but i feel like if we want us people are getting upset because the engagement in athletics is going down, the, f the money in the sport is going down, the attractiveness of the sport isn't as it is, as it isn't what it used to be. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, what do we do about it? And, there's, and the thing is with our sport, they, we don't have the kind of unison within the athletes to band together and say, actually, maybe we're getting underpaid, or maybe we're not getting opportunities that we should get, or maybe, no, we deserve more time on TV, we deserve this. We're not doing that because the person at the top of the tree doesn't give a about the person who's below it and yeah. maybe if I was the person at the top of the tree maybe I wouldn't care because I'm getting looked after and that's calm that's right. so yeah. I get it I get and it's an individual sport we've got to be for ourselves but I think there's got to be a point where everyone who loves the sport people within the sport and those who want to get involved in the sport we have to all be on the same page and look at it and say actually how do we get the sport back to where it was to the point where you know you got like look at Skepta Skepta put Lynn for Christie in these lyrics yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? You want to get to the point where someone's going to put you in a lyric. Like, that's how big... That's how big That's how you big are. the sport is and that's how big you are. You know, our point where... Like, yeah, and this is the thing that makes me laugh, I guess, within the track, because you see guys and girls who perform sick and they roll around like, I'm the... How do you not know me? Mm. Brother, no one knows you. No one knows you. Just because here people are in the centre and everything is seeing your face, we don't know you. When you leave the building or when you leave the athletics kind of environment, mm. no one don't know who the hell you are. And that's the reality of it. It shouldn't be the case, but that's the reality of it right now. Yeah. So, and I don't have, I'm sitting here just spinning off ideas off, top, off the top of my head. I don't have the answers, but you know, as, as an athlete who's heard a lot about how the sport used to be, even if you see YouTube videos and you look at what it used to be like, yeah. it's like, man, like anniversary games this year meant to be basically probably the biggest diamond league on the circuit the stadium was 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 not packed out it was not packed out athletics world cup it was not i, I get they had issues with the planning and blah 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 still if it's a big competition why is it not packed out what are you guys doing wrong that you can't sell this out give mm. free tickets out to school give kids to yeah, yeah. School i've always kids. said this <laughs> give free tickets to kids because if they come and they see someone who they can who they feel as though they can relate to running fast and getting success they're going to think Raw. that could be the next usain bolt in that stadium yeah. who sees it because there was a scheme that um gave his school or his youth club or whatever free tickets to come and watch the athletics that's how you fill out stadiums not by not by um, advertising the competition to the same crowd every year who are going to come and do the same every year. Mm -hmm. It's dead. Have trials in another place. Have trials in London. Maybe that might change things. That we'll would be amazing. Like, it's a quick track as well. It's, yeah, it's so old school and it's so ancient. Like the whole way we do things and it's like, it's just dead. Like, I, but I love track, so I'm not someone who's going to quit track because these things are not happening. Yeah. But the truth of the matter is, you know, where, how does this sport, how does this sport evolve? That's how does the big it help you to stay in the sport? And how do you, how does it help you stay in the sport if, if, when you're young? And that's when what I said young, earlier. Yeah. If you don't have a contract, when you're young coming through, it's going to be hard. But there aren't other outlets because the sport is still functioning quite amateurly. Mm. There aren't a lot of outlets for you to, um, for you to, to gain income or to get kind of, 
your foot on the ladder without being the thing straight away. Yeah. And that's the problem. But with football, it's not like that because if you don't get it to the Prem, you're going to get into the Championship. If you don't get a Championship, you're going to have, there's going to have, there's different, too. There's different <laughs> you're always going to have a way to have engagement. But with track, it's either you're good or you're not. Yeah. And I get, and I, and I appreciate the, the I, I appreciate the cutthroat aspect of it. But in the same breath, how do we keep young talent in the sport that maybe haven't blossomed yet? Mm-hmm. Are there more platforms for sponsorship opportunities? I know we have a few in the UK, but again, they're very old school. Yeah. Are there new methods to attract people in? You know, these are the, even the competition structure. So many things that we, over time, I think we've got to take a leaf out of the book of other sports. Because look at it, it's like, I'm not even out here trying to cuss other sports here. But like something like a sport like, let me say, um, what sport can I even think of? Like cricket, for instance. That get more clout than athletics. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, cricket is more boring than athletics. I'm, I'm, I don't care. <laughs> cricket, right, hate, hate me, hate me for saying it. Cricket, right. bowls, I can't invest my <laughs> it's time. It's boring. I can't invest my time. It's boring. Really Cycling. Can't. Can't athletics is athletics is more entertaining. I think it's a biased opinion, but I, f- I think athletics is more entertaining than those sports. Yeah. But those sports get more coverage and more exposure and more fun than all the rest of it. But we don't. We're doing something wrong, and I think uh, you know at some point someone's got someone's got to say something. Someone's got to do something because you know I, this is uh, and this is sad, it's sad I'm saying it, but the way athletics is right now, it's not a sport that if I have a child, I would say I want you to be a track do star. Do you yeah. know what I'd say I want you to be a footballer. Because I see more from that than athletics right now. They get looked after more. They get looked after more. I see more from that than football. Than football right now. I mean, than athletics right now. And it's I've sad. always said that an incentive should be, if you win um, England champs, yeah. you get a a significant amount of kit mm. from British athletics. Yeah, they're obviously they're being looked after by Nike. Mm-hmm, yeah. So and, first, and second, kit drops are not a hard thing to do. First, second, third. You get kit drop, obviously, mm. depending on where you come, yeah. depends on what you get. Yeah, that's an that's an incentive right there mm-hmm. for someone to do it. Or yeah. cool, you you won. We're gonna take care of your next five six competitions. Yeah, because there's no the competitions. Inse- there's no incentive. Are not cheap. No, I'm and all I, here. And luck, I've been so lucky that I've always been in a, pos- in a position where I've had financial support yeah. from an external source that's just funded my dream. Mm. But I've always and I, and I admire people who have second jobs or nine to fives and are still trying to chase this dream because yeah. I know I probably couldn't do that. Like and or I could do it, but I don't know if I would be still as be successful as I am right now or still be in a sport because it is difficult. And it's especially difficult when there is an incentive, like you're saying, to, to do it. Yeah. It's like I flex is one of those sports which is which is probably one of one in a sense of you could train for more than you train more than you compete for one, and then not only that, you could train and still not get nothing out of it. Yeah. Imagine that all the training, all the winter training, all the winter training, the grinding, the sacrificing, the missing out on opportunities in, in life because you're chasing this dream, mm-hmm. and you still might not get anything because there can only be eight finalists, three medalists, and one champion. So, the, the rate of failure, the percentage of failure, is much more high. higher than the percentage. Of success, so it's like, raw. I'm not getting nothing out of this, and people say, oh yeah, but don't chase this, and you know, don't chase the money, and don't chase this and that. But we've got to work towards something. You can't yeah. tell someone to go all, all, all um, wholehearted for for free, or in the hopes of not getting anything out of it, unless it's your hobby. Yeah. Then I understand that. But it's like people gotta be realistic. At the end of the day, you need your financial support. Yeah, and then you need financial support because unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. you know, <laughs> dreams don't pay the bills. <laughs> dreams don't fund your life. We can all dream, <laughs> but we all wake up and make things happen. So um, that's when it comes to athletics. I, I guess to answer your question, you know, that's what I think we need to do better. And yeah. either Belayef, you know, I think, and this is, it gets very political because honestly, I guess no one really knows what's happening behind closed doors. doors when it comes to IWAF but you know I guess they do a good job of, of they've done a good job of making a Diamond League as prestigious as it is and everything else and I guess they're doing a good job to a certain degree but I feel like they can do more for the athletes I think athletes should be paid more than we're being paid I think um, the events like the pride like the pride the, the, I saw this on Twitter I think Tiana Bartoletta was talking about it mm. and like 
they brought out like the schedule for the World Indoor Tour coming up yeah. and the prize money. And I think it collated to like 20 bags or something like that. And it was like... US or pound? US. But then I guess with, with the exchange rate now, maybe it's not that bad. But still... Yeah. Like, what? These world-class athletes are busting their ass yeah, indoors for, for 20 grand. Do you know, you could go to the US Open or Wimbledon, get battered and make more than that. Are you crazy? And these are the best. This is, this, is, this is not if you take part in the tour. This is if you win it. Yeah. You get that. So what happens to the people who didn't win that are just yeah. as good, the baby just came up short. They're walking home with like maybe 10 bags, eight bags, seven. I'm like, nah. That's why I think Ade Belayev could do better. Like, I know the money's somewhere. Yeah. And it's got like, and this is the thing, I guess if you're the person who's getting the money, you might not complain. But what if, what if you could get more? What if, like, what if you could get more? Yeah. Then would you be happy? With, would you be happy with what you're getting right now if you knew there was more out there? That's what I'd say. But these are the powers that are way above me, and my job is just to compete. But and you know, I sound like I sound like someone who's political and stuff. But I I don't, I don't want no business in that. To be honest, I don't want to get involved in that. But you know, these are the questions I think as athletes we've got to be away. We bust our ass off, but at the end of the day, what are you busting your ass off for? Question of the talk when I'm stepping in. Thirty battles up the zoom till I'm sending me. I had to let